Are you enjoying your holiday season out there? I most certainly hope that you are. And we are going to spice it up just right with some Vinegar Syndrome rankings of their Christmas films. So let's have some fun. Spice up that eggnog. Stay tuned. What's up, everybody? Ken here. Welcome back to Ungraduated Media, your channel, your show that's all about the fun of collecting, the learning that comes from collecting movies, books, and music. Of course, Vinegar Syndrome, there's a lot of fun. There's collectability, but not a lot of learning. So we love talking about the perspective from films on this channel, not just the collecting and the packaging, but that is a big piece of it. And today we are going to be talking about some Vinegar Syndrome goodness from the holiday season. So if you are into movies, books, and music, you like talking about the collectability, the fun that comes along with that, but also some perspective, I hope that you will subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you have already, well then, thank you. Welcome back. Glad to have you here along with us. So I have been diving headfirst into Vinegar Syndrome throughout the entire year of 2023, having really gotten more or less started towards the end of 2022 learning a lot about them. Yes, not all their films are fantastic, but there are some really good ones out there. And in particular, these four, just four that I believe they have from their main line, there are probably plenty of partner labels that have Christmas themed. I thought I would do my own personal rankings, having watched all four of these. So if you are needing a little bit of a break from the family, you want to go scour away in your own little world and enjoy some holiday Vinegar Syndrome goodness, well, I've got something, of course, for you. These four films, they're actually pretty entertaining. Some are better than others. It'll be a relatively quick review. I'll go through each one of the films, give some highlights, give some thoughts, talk about if there's any perspective. And that, of course, will be what the video becomes. Kind of going off the cuff here, as I like to do. Let's get right into it. Oh, wait a second. We're going to do a Vinegar Syndrome holiday. Well, we then have to do it right. Now we're ready. In at number four, we have the cult classic from Lewis Jackson, Christmas Evil, The Night He Dropped In. This is a view of uh, the art, the slipcover. I'll give you all just a quick little glance. This is an older release from Vinegar Syndrome. This is number 60. And you can always tell an older Vinegar Syndrome release because the backs look so much different than what they do today. But this is actually a 4K that was put onto a Blu-ray disc, so restored in 4K. You do have a Blu-ray and the DVD. I believe that's a DVD. Yep, DVD and a Blu-ray. And again, no, wow, look at that. One of the rare instances, no interior cover art, no reversible cover art. Anyway, getting to the film. So in the film, we have the main character, forget his name right now, that is traumatized by a young childhood event. Let's just say it's been repeated over and over in a few films. He sees mommy getting a little naughty with Santa. But is it really Santa? You can be the judge of that, if you still believe, that is. Anyways, it traumatizes him, and he sets out to try to make things right in the world. He keeps a list of all the little good boys and girls, kind of creepy-ish, stares across his window and with binoculars is eyeing up who the good children are and who the bad children are. He works in a toy factory, assembling toys, takes his job very, very seriously. What ends up happening is, he ends up having to work on a night off uh, that he is supposed to be off and covers for a co-worker of his only to be bamboozled to find them out at the pub later on that evening. And things go awry for him from there. He decides that there has been enough in his life of not having the Christmas spirit. He sets off to go do right by the world and bring the Christmas joy back. Unfortunately, things go horribly wrong 
without giving away the film, if you want to watch this gem of a film, it's more of a cult classic. Would not call this a masterpiece. None of these films are masterpieces. Although, as you work towards the top here, there is one that I might actually classify, not a masterpiece, but pretty close to it. So in at number four, it's a fun film. It's got uh, not a ton of kills or gore or guts or blood. This is just a relatively interesting horror take on Christmas from Vinegar Syndrome. Of course, this film may be available I'm sure outside of just Vinegar Syndrome, I'm sure all of these films are probably available to some level outside of just Vinegar Syndrome, but we're talking about Vinegar Syndrome here, folks. So, number four, Christmas Evil. In at number three, we have Jack Frost. Now, this has a very cool lenticular slipcover from, uh, from Vinegar Syndrome that I unfortunately don't have, but it is a really cool slip. Perhaps one day I will go get it. Got some interior cover art. You got the DVD over here, Blu-ray over here, and you got the reversible cover art. Not going to bother to, well, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and show you. And you got smiley face, smiley face Jack Frost. And then you've got, well, you've got, you've got evil faced Jack Frost. And this is just a fun one. It's, it's laughable. It's so bad, it's good. And probably what's the most interesting about this film, it's got Shannon Elizabeth's debut, her feature film debut. She is young. I don't know how old she is. Probably early 20s. Maybe she's just 18, 19. And besides being ridiculous and over the top, well, there's Shannon Elizabeth. So if you've got nothing else, no other reason to want to watch Jack Frost. You should watch it for Elizabeth herself. Shannon Elizabeth Fadar. Was it Fadar and then Elizabeth? I'm not sure. But anyways, check it out for her alone. She plays a relatively decent role in this. She's in it for half the time. She plays a character named Jill, who's the sister of a, an, I think, obnoxious, annoying brother. The father picks on the other dad of the kid who's kind of a dweeb, a dork in this. The father's a sheriff. It's this, you know, late 90s themed town and the kids are being obnoxious and there's an accident that occurs while sledding that sets the father into a rage chasing after this kid and his family, the sheriff who's the father of this kid. I'm getting down a rabbit hole here. What really this is about <laughs> is a killer who's uh, on death row death row and he escapes well thinks he escapes in a an accident that boils his skin it's like a poisonous gas is released and he basically melts away in this horrific scene and falls into the snow and oh he becomes jack frost of course and all the while the underlying is the former of what i said the latter the former the latter the first part about the sheriff that is trying to protect the town, also protect his son, who swears that a snowman, an evil snowman, is killing people. And Jack Frost himself comes back as a snowman. It's so cheesy. It's so silly. This costume, there's mittens that, that come out of it and grab. It's so over-the-top stupid that you have to watch it. it um, it's entertaining. I'll definitely say that. It's an entertaining film, but it is one that you have to take with a grain of salt. You watch it for the entertainment value alone. The only reason why this is number three and not number four is because of Shannon Elizabeth. <laughs> no, not just that. It actually is funny. There's some humor built into this film that kind of took me by surprise. There are some funny moments that the comedic relief within this film is actually done in the proper way. Now the special effects, about as low budget as they come. There is a bit more gore, a bit more blood in this one. There's a scene with Shannon Elizabeth. She's not full on nude, but yeah, it's a scene with Shannon Elizabeth, pre-American Pie. I guess it was a foreshadowing of things to come. Anyways, number three on the list, Jack Frost.
In at number two, we have Don't Open Until Christmas. Now, I'm going to give you just a quick pick, just a, <laughs> just a quick peek, literally, boom, of the Vinegar Syndrome slipcover. So that's the back. I already saw the front. And this one is a bit more exploitative, okay? This is the reversible cover art, uh, the more traditional don't open till Christmas art. Here's a view of the back. And this is spine number 411. Jack Frost, by the way, 148. Didn't give that. So don't open till Christmas. This one just comes with a Blu-ray. Creepy face mask on there. And again, your reversible cover art, the tame version is just the original. And then of course, Vinegar Syndrome knows how to spice things up, bam, whenever they want to get people to buy a film. And it's often said that uh, the covers <laughs> that are the best are some of the worst films to get you to buy them. This one was actually pretty decent. It's a horror Christmas film, okay? In this situation, again, we have a childhood traumatic scene with Santa Claus comes out to rear its ugly head once again. This time, this assailant, as he grows up, is out for pure vengeance. He's not just trying to embody Santa Claus like Christmas evil. No, not the case. In Don't Open for Christmas, he ends up killing anything, anyone, that is, dressed in a Santa outfit. And in this famous scene, whoop, there's a lady of the night, <laughs> I don't really know if that's the case, but it, at, some point, at some point in the film, she is left out in the cold after some photography shooting. Lots more nudity in this one. Lots more bazungas, if you know what I mean. And that famous scene where this cover art was taken from, she's exposed as the killer decides whether or not to kill her. And in that moment, he does not. But he definitely kills plenty of Santa Clauses along the way. And it uh, is a lot more gory. This is definitely one of the more gory, probably I'd say the most gory, bloody, tons of kills in this one. A uh, typical Vinegar Syndrome horror flick turned into a holiday, holiday Christmas horror-themed film. But it's a fun watch, and hence why it's number two on this rankings list of just the four known Vinegar Syndrome films. If there are others than this four in their main line, drop a comment in the comment section below. I only am aware of these four. I think I have all of them. And in their entire catalog now of 460 or so films, let me know if there are some other holiday themed ones within the Vinegar Syndrome lineup. But Don't Open Till Christmas, filmed in London, London-based film, a lot more exploitative in the sexual aspects of the film. Not, not Nothing hardcore, just a lot more nudity in this one. A lot more kills, but nonetheless, a fun film. Ah! Watch out. Don't open till Christmas. Number two. And in at the top, surprise or not, I don't know. Deadly Games, Dial Code, Santa Claus, Renee Manzer. So this is a 1989 gem. Dare I say borderline masterpiece when it comes to Vinegar Syndrome. That's where I was all alluding to, okay? Masterpiece for Vinegar Syndrome. Although it's not really their film, but as far as putting out films go, this is a great Christmas flick. It totally, totally with the known history that I've heard about this film has to do with what looks like a ripoff from Home Alone. Home Alone being the, the title that ripped this off. So Renee Manzer has went on to direct a lot of well-known films. He's been involved in producing and directing, I think, Edge of Tomorrow. Uh, he's been involved in some Avatar stuff. He's also done The Passage, Labyrinth, a few of his own bigger name films. So the fact that um, he is kind of getting his teeth cut in the film world with this awesome film. And this is in 4K from Vinegar Syndrome. Give you guys a look and I'll talk about the film here in a second. 
So it's also, it's, it goes by many different titles. Uh, Deadly Games, Dial Code Santa Claus. I think this is uh, 3615, which was the zip code or dial code down here on the uh, disc art. This is the Blu-ray. This is the 4K. Obviously, you've got no interior cover art, but the reversible artwork on this is the more original known name of the film, which is, I think, dial code 3615, I think is what that looks like. 3615. But man, I just watched this, and it was it lived up to the hype. It takes a while for the film to kind of get going, and when it does, it absolutely has that Home Alone feel with some of the traps that have to be set with this kid. And this this kid is is quite an actor, let me just say. I don't know how old he was in this film. Couldn't be more than like 12 years old, but it's a fun one. His mother is a big business woman exec, and she is working Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. He's at home with his grandfather. She has to leave for business. She tells him to watch after his grandfather, who's probably, you know, 70s-ish and needs some care. And what's kind of creepy about this film is it seems like it's it's the computer era, but pre-internet era. This is 1989, obviously, but there's computer programs. And there's this scene where he is with his buddy on a computer talking to someone. And his buddy's like, hey, knock it off. That's probably some some creepo. And sure enough, that's what it ends up being. But he's trying to figure out if Santa Claus is real or if Santa Claus is not real. And at some point in this communication, he gives his address or almost gives his address. And anyway, this Santa in the film is, is a really well done Santa. Creepy guy, almost has this like pedo kind of a vibe. Uh, he gets fired from his mother in the film. His mother hires, she throws on this big uh, bonanza of a party and wants all these actors and a Santa Claus there. And he ends up being one of the Santa Clauses. And he gets fired for slapping a kid across the face because the kid says, I don't like your face. You're not the real Santa. So he goes into a tizzy, his Santa getup in this film. It's, it's creepy, but it's, it's authoritative. It's, um, it's a very interesting take on an evil Santa. He doesn't even really speak the Santa in this film, which is also kind of creepy. He just kind of methodically moves along. And as he gets to the house to try to do whatever he's trying to do with Thomas, Thomas, um, that's where the Home Alone theme kind of just comes from. So many people say that this was taken and lifted and brought into an Americanized version of what we would accept for a Hollywood big blockbuster film. But this one certainly delivers and it is my number one spot it's a pretty good 4k i wouldn't say reference quality i've seen better 4k transfers from vinegar syndrome it wasn't bad by any stretch it was good at parts lots of i wouldn't say lots but a fair amount of film grain you could tell it's an older film but there are some more vibrant scenes with some glowing and some some brighter colors that the 4k really stood on its own with but fun film really enjoyed it topped my list and yeah, what are your thoughts on any of these films? Have you watched any of them? The four that I talked through here, what are your thoughts on them? Are there other Vinegar Syndrome films that I'm missing? I don't think that there is, but if there are, let me know in the comment section below. Hope you enjoy checking this out. Didn't want to make it too, too long. Wanted to go off the cuff. It's almost Christmas at the time of this recording. So I do wish you and yours a very happy holiday season wherever you're at. Whatever you're celebrating, whatever you're doing, be safe out there, have fun, watch some vinegar syndrome. It makes the holidays more fun. It spices up that eggnog, if you know what I'm saying. Until next time, take care for now. Talk to all you again soon.